today's video, I'm back once again with another throwback look, this time at the Transformers Hunt for the Decepticons Revenge of the Fallen, Voyager Class The Fallen. Now, yes, I did in fact actually do a throwback review for this guy, I believe in 2019, but those were back in the old days of the channel where it was incredibly dimly lit, and to be honest with you, I don't really think I gave this figure justice, so I thought that I would do an updated throwback review today, where I not only show the figure in much better lighting conditions, but of course show him in his alternate mode, as I merely just showed him in the robot form. So in today's video, we're going to do an entire review of this guy and to be honest with you I actually think this is the fallen that time forgot not many collectors actually know that this guy even exists which is super unfortunate as out of all of the fallen figures that Hasbro did release I think this guy is by far the best but we'll touch base with that more when we take a look at him in the robot form now of course the fallen in revenge of the fallen never actually had an alt mode so Hasbro decided to give him this super abstract looking Cybertronian jet and to be fair I actually don't think this looks half bad you can see that it does look incredibly alien in regards to the design but I actually think it looks super super cool now one thing you'll notice is that the Fallen is this time cast out of a very peculiar colour scheme. I really have no idea as to what the designers at Hasbro thought when they put this guy together but to be honest with you, it's definitely grown on me over the years and I guess if you hated it that much, you could really just take a black spray can and spray this guy as of course in the movie he was more or less black or gunmetal but you can see that in regards to detail we've got this super abstract alien looking cockpit, really awesome blue paint apps going on there for the front. You can see some of those turquoise areas where the thigh section of the Fallen is as we turn our attention here to the side of the figure of course we've merely just got the feet protruding off to the side which definitely don't look the best but I guess you could call these the thrusters or the intakes of this particular jet as we turn our attention here to the central section of the fallen this panel does indeed actually come over the top of the head I guess in order to kind of conceal that but that once again does look fairly alien in regards to design and of course we've got the arms here at the top which once again I don't think look too bad and in regards to sleekness the jet actually is fairly sleek from the underside we do in fact get the landing gear so we've got two here at the back as well as one at the front and these can in fact be retracted in order to create for a slightly more cleaner silhouette and then as we just spin our attention here to the back, you can see that quite honestly, the Fallen really doesn't look like a heck of a lot. So overall, definitely a throwaway mode. By far, not the mode that I'll be keeping this guy in as the robot mode is certainly glorious. And to be honest with you, if Hasbro never actually give us a Studio Series version of this guy, I'll be more than suffice with this. I think in regards to movie accuracy, especially when we get him into robot form, he was by far one of the best Hasbro figures that they ever put out during that Hunt for the Decepticons slash Revenge of the Fallen toy line. And all of those figures were pretty much spot on. So to say this guy is probably in a league of his own is definitely saying something he really does look exceptional so without further ado let's get him transformed up into the glorious robot form so to begin with i like to take this panel here and just pull these arms back to the sides so we can then detach the legs just like so bring these down hinge this section in rotate here at the thigh rotate here at the knee and then of course rotate at the foot turn your attention here to the front of the figure repeat the exact same process here for this side so rotate all of these joints around certainly a lot of swivels going on we're then going to want to bring this down to allow for the waist to rotate we can then take this section collapse this here up to the top take the nose cone collapse that there into the back and sadly some of the joints do have a tendency to pop off but if you want for a battle damage look then that definitely isn't a bad thing at all we're then just going to want to take these shoulder regions snap them here out of place and of course repeat the same process and there you've got the hunt for the Decepticons the Fallen fully transformed up and the figure looks awesome honestly definitely the best version of the Fallen that Hasbro ever put together and there might be many of you out there who say that this guy is basically the same as the original for Fallen and for the most part he is the entire body is merely just a recast and of course like recolor but the entire head sculpt is a complete brand new sculpt they completely re-engineered it so that it now has a ball joint and it does in fact actually have the give me your face removable gimmick which of course will touch base with later on in the review so bringing this guy in here for a closer look I actually love the design of the Fallen he was one of the first Transformers characters which I truly thought looked incredibly alien really intimidating really freaky and of course incredibly scary you can see here in regards to the face sculpt design it looks so so awesome we've got all of these tendril sections protruding off to the side the actual face sculpt itself looks so so intimidating I definitely do get mummy vibes from this I really do like the Egyptian motif that the face sculpt does give off as we turn our attention here to the torso region you can see some of those blue highlights which of course I know won't be down to everybody's personal preference but I actually don't mind the colours on this guy they definitely have grown on me over time but I would have loved to have gotten a repaint of him in of course more traditional movie accurate colours but taking a look here at the arms you can see really really nice sculpt work once again incredibly alien especially here for the arms we can take these sections and flare these up in order to fill out some of those bicep regions so of course we'll just repeat the same process here on the opposite side but it's completely down to personal preference you can see here for the torso once again all of those multi-layered panels on top of one another all looking fantastic 
fantastic. Some metallic purple highlights here in order to complement that turquoise blue. The finger detailing looking fantastic. I also believe that not only did they re-engineer the head for this guy, but they also gave him completely brand new wrists. So he now has wrist articulation as well as brand new sculpted hands which can indeed open and close, which is for a feature which we'll demonstrate in just a second. And then as we turn our attention here to the side of the Fallen's legs, you can see as per tradition to Michael Bay designs, incredibly freaky and of course incredibly abstract. And then as we turn our attention here to the back of the figure, very clean for the most part, actually looking pretty decent. Now, one of the major critiques I actually had with this mold in general was that the feet were spring-loaded. That is just super, super annoying, meaning that he constantly has to be plonked down with force in order to actually get him to stand. And of course, if you were to manipulate him, it would be very tricky to actually get him stationed on the ground. So if Hasbro ever do put out another version of the Fallen in the Studio Series, that is definitely an area which I hope to see fixed. But in regards to an actual design, this guy to me just looks incredible. So, so awesome, super intimidating, and he was by far one of the biggest voyages that they ever put together. Now, very quickly going over the articulation, quite honestly, if you've got the original Fallen, you'll know exactly what to expect, besides the head sculpt and, of course, the hands. So the head sculpt can now, in fact, look up as well as down to a terrific degree, which is just so, so cool. And it's also on a ball joint, so it can look left to right ever so slightly and it can also in fact actually rotate left to right which allows for some very freaky really really cool looking poses and here for the wrists we now indeed do get a rotation as well as a hinge joint here and the actual fingers here at the top can also grasp the staff accessory as yes this version of the fallen unlike the original revenge of the fallen fallen did come with his signature staff that we see him use in the movie now this has been completely cast out of black plastic besides this purple section holding the two halves together and i think the sculpt work is really really impressive you can see there this section which actually looks vaguely familiar to the fallen's face i'm not entirely sure whether or not that was intentional this has been cast out of a fairly flexible rubbery plastic it is a shame that it's not hard plastic but due to safety reasons i can completely understand as to why it has been made out of this material and it's very easy to actually insert into the hand so you can see how we've got this cast but that you just take the staff wedge that in there and of course wrap the fingers around in order to give you the impression that the fallen has in fact got his staff weapon which looks super super cool i'll be sure to post images at the beginning of this review actually showcasing this guy with that weapon and honestly he's just so so cool but then turning to what is arguably the figure's main feature if we actually bring him in here once again for a closer look much like in the movie when optimus prime does take the fallen down he does request one thing from this guy and that is to give him his face as you can remove this entire almost helmet section I guess, in order to reveal the endoskeleton of the Fallen, and this is just super, super cool, and it's something that I don't believe Hasbro have ever actually done, I don't believe they've ever actually given us the dead version of a live action movie character, of course they've given us the alternate universe Optimus Prime, which is the dead G1 Prime, but I don't believe they've ever actually given us any dead versions of the live action Michael Bay characters, so this was just so, so cool, you can see the attention to detail for this is awesome, I really love the colour of plastic it's been cast out of, and you can see the silver metallic paint really does help in order to amplify some of the sharp details of the sculpt and it's just such a nice looking face sculpt you can see the texture there to the actual eyes picked out in blue you can see that circular section that he had in the mouthpiece just before he died and fell to his knees and optimus of course rised from the ashes and dust but just such a cool figure overall i'm super super impressed with how this guy turned out and if the studio series version doesn't offer a give me your face gimmick then already it's failed as i just think that is just such a cool gimmick for this character to indeed actually obtain and then of course you just take this main faceplate section apply it over the top and there you've got the fallen fully resurrected waiting to take down the last of the primes here for a very quick size comparison we've got the hunt for the decepticons the fallen compared next to the studio series voyager class optimus prime and call me crazy but i actually think the scale between these guys works really really nicely of course maybe the fallen should be slightly bigger and if hopefully we do indeed get a leader class fallen in the studio series then maybe that might help to sort out the scale but consider how big those older Hunt for the Decepticon Voyager figures truly were. I think the scale here for the most part works really, really nicely. This version of the character, for those of you who've seen my collection videos, does in fact take place in my live action movie studio series display and I have no issue with that at all. I think he looks great with some of the characters. The level of accuracy that Hasbro were able to pull off with this guy I think is still so, so well done and you can even see when compared to a newer, more contemporary figure almost 10 years on this guy's original release, I still think he holds up exceptionally well, if not in some areas actually better. And so, some final thoughts here for the Transformers Hunt for the Decepticons Voyager Class The Fallen. Overall, I think this figure is great. In regards to a rating, I would definitely probably give him a 9 out of 10. The only area 
Junior, which really lacks on this guy is the color scheme. To be fair, I don't really even count the alt mode as a critique, as this guy never really transformed in the movie, and it doesn't compromise the look of the robot form at all. So if anything, the alternate mode is just a bonus on him. It really is just the color. But I think if Hasbro were able to sort out, this guy would have been a perfect 10 out of 10. In regards to robot mode, I think he looks fantastic. And of course, with the improvements made to the head sculpt, the wrists, and of course, now the inclusion of the staff, this truly was the ultimate version of this character. And you saw even when comparing him to that Studio Series Optimus Prime, he still holds up impeccably well. So for those of you who are becoming slightly impatient with Hasbro actually getting around to releasing a Studio Series version, then I would definitely recommend to track this guy down. He's by far the best version of the Fallen that we ever got. And if I were to be 100% honest, I'm not entirely convinced that the Studio Series version would be able to top this, as this guy to me truly is fantastic. If they sorted out the color scheme and just reissued this guy, honestly, I'd be pretty happy with that. I think he's super, super cool. And of course, got rid of that stupid spring-loaded gimmick where the feet are concerned. He would definitely be a solid 10 out of 10. I would love to know down in the comment section below on what you guys think of this particular figure. Do any of you guys actually own this in the collection? And if so, what do you think of it? Do you rate it as highly as I do? And like me, are you sufficed with this guy? And perhaps I'm not so keen on actually getting a Studio Series version. I thank you all so much for watching, and until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.